it's good to be back at the, the LTUE. Um, I wish I uh, wish it could be in person, but I'm glad to be coming to you over the interwebs, through the ether, however it is that you guys are receiving this. So uh, my name is Tony Weisskopf. I'm the uh, publisher, editor-in-chief, and art director for My Sins um, of Bain Books. Um, if any of you have been to a uh, road show in person, you, you'd know that uh, I encourage uh, interaction. Um, I understand that there will be, um, uh, Mike will be collecting questions uh, so that we can, uh, we can answer those at, uh, at, at the end of the session. Thanks, uh, thanks for anybody who, um, who's here and wants to contribute. Um, we really do appreciate that. Um, also, we usually like to give out free books, so if there's any way that we can hand out free ebooks, we will figure out a way to do that. So please do ask your questions so they know who to give the free books to. Uh, with that, no further ado, um, my colleague Jim Minns is here as well. He'll be popping in um, uh, to say hello. hello. He's been a guest. There he is. <laughs> uh, he's been a guest at uh, the LTUE as well. So uh, we thank you again for your hospitality. Um, there is about a three second lag, we figure, between what it is that I am seeing on the screen and what it is that you guys are seeing. Um, so if, uh, if somebody is hijacking this on another end, um, you know, let us know that too. So um, welcome to Bain. Just to, uh, just to set the tone, um, we give you an exploding spaceship. Ah, let's see, Bain.com. You guys know we have a website, right? Um, uh, it is our website. It is not controlled by somebody else's social media, um, and we welcome you to it. Um, we do lots and lots of things at the website, um, including giving you a sign up for our newsletter, which we do twice a month. Um, we do not overwhelm your inbox with crap. Um, instead, we have two informative newsletters, one about the uh, ebooks, one about the print books. Um, we have contests, again, free books. There's a, there's a theme that's going on. Um, we don't sell your information to anybody. We don't use it for anything but the newsletter. How about that? <coughs> um, one of the things that's on the website is our archive of uh, weekly podcasts. If you guys like uh, conventions and hearing authors talk about stuff and artists and editors and uh, sometimes we even have the office cats um, we do that every week Friday Friday afternoons um, and we'd love you for you guys to join that um, they are available on iTunes and they're archived on YouTube and we call it the Bain free radio hour but we're now videoing them so I'm not even sure what the heck they are but um, but the uh, the lovely uh, Tony Daniel is our host for the podcasts, and uh, David F. Sharared, who's also been at this convention, um, is uh, is one of our guest hosts, frequent guest hosts. Um, Bain's Bar, we have and have had for a very long time our own uh, chat room um, at Bain.com. It's called Bain's Bar. We are still going strong. Um, and uh, if you, like me, are frustrated by other forms of social media, um, come on over to the bar. We, we, we try to have fun and we try to keep it civilized. Audiobooks. We know, we, we hear that people like audiobooks. Um, and uh, as it happens, um, as a result of Jim Minz's hard work, um, pretty much all of Bain's backlist, pretty much everything that we have in print is now uh, contracted to be an audiobook. Um, uh, we've done uh, big bulk contracts, um, so we're not necessarily sure exactly when these books are coming out, um, but you can email us and we will try to, we will try to nail down a date. Um, but uh, Pretty much everything that we do, all of the publishers that we work with, um, also post at audible.com. And we hear you like libraries. Libraries is another thing that, uh, uh, another place that we go, another place that our stories get sold. Um, and uh, so if you, if you want to find our books at libraries, you can go to your local library, if they're on, if they have an overdrive account, then you should be able to find our stuff. Again, it 
pretty much the entire list is available at libraries. Unlike other publishers, we will not name them. Um, we love libraries and we think that libraries are a great place to find our things. So that's Bain. I'll give you a chance to see the snazzy graphic. And then we'll talk about finding new talent. Um, we have two contests, two short story contests that we do. We have just closed the um, submissions for this one, the Jim Bain Memorial Award. Um, and that is for hard science fiction, near future, near space, positive stories of humanity's future in space. Um, we, uh, at around year 11, we realized we had done more than 10 years worth of uh, worth of contests. And we, we put together a really great volume of hard science fiction, really proud of that one. Um, William Ledbetter, Bill Ledbetter is an author in his own right, Nebula Award winner. And um, he uh, he's the editor on for, for this um, award because it was his idea. Um, the, uh, you can see that one of the prizes that you get for winning the Jim Bain Memorial Award is not only the glory, but also you get a substantial um, uh, award that you can hold in your hand, show to your mom, put on your shelf, and it's got a sharp point, who knows, you know, could, could be a last, last ditch weapon. Um, I have not, not heard, heard of it being used as, as such. We also will publish your story at Bain.com and you will get professional rates for that. Um, so the other award, um, the other uh, contest, the short story contest that we run is the annual Bain Fantasy Adventure Award. And it too includes a snazzy, um, a snazzy physical award. It includes publication at Bain.com. It includes uh, professional rates for that publication. And um, Jim Minns is the editor on that. Um, Jim, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Bain Fantasy Adventure Award? Because that um, the uh, that that has just opened up very recently for new submissions. Jim. Ah, okay. Well, <clears throat> um, hopefully my internet will will hold up. Um, it was a little dodgy earlier tonight, so hopefully. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll have one or the other of us. But at any rate, Jim is the, uh, is the initial editor um, for this one. And we should tell you that the, the way that we do this is that the, the, the judging is blind, which is to say, we don't know who's written what story. <clears throat> the only um, uh, qualification for submission to these stories is that, they, is that the subject matter fit our, um, fit our guidelines. They are available at bain.com. Um, there's no submission fee. Um, and we don't know, and, and, and uh, your name is erased from, from the manuscript. So we are reading only, we are judging only on the basis of story. We don't care where you come from. We don't care who your daddy is. Um, we don't care about any of that. All we care about is, is this a really fantastic story? Um, and we think that's a virtue. So Bain Fantasy Adventure Award um, for all of you uh, writers out there, and I'm sure there are plenty. This is a great way to uh, to get a publication and to uh, and, and to let yourselves be known to us. This is the winner from last year, uh, Scott Huggins. Um, he's very very pleased that he won the award. Perhaps too pleased. Um, his T-shirt, uh, if you can read it, says "Fools, I will destroy you all." Ask me how. That is a writer's t-shirt, if I have ever seen one. We usually give these awards out at, um, uh, at various conventions throughout the year. The Science Fiction Award gets uh, given out at the International Space Development Conference. Um, we've given the Bain Fantasy Adventure Award out um, uh, at uh, NASFIX, at, uh, our, at uh, Gen Cons, at Dragon Cons, and it'll probably be at Dragon Con this year that we do this. All right, let's see. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Bain ebooks. We do ebooks. We've been doing ebooks since 1999. 1999, people. That's now whole people have 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 come and been born and can now yeah, vote. <laughs> um scary to scary to think of that. That is how old our ebooks are. Um we do original ebooks. Um, Steve White, uh, we've got a new original Steve White time travel 
um, ebook called The Malice of Fortune that'll be out um, in the spring sometime. Um, we do ebooks from other publishers, Wordfire Press, Privateer Press, Jabberwocky. Um, some of our authors uh, have small presses themselves. Um, Sharon Lee and Steve Miller, they, uh, they, they publish some of their things um, independently, and we sell them as ebooks on the Bain website, One Stop Shopping. Uh, Chris Kennedy's um, uh, multiple imprints, Fairwood Press, uh, which is a West Coast. Um, small press. We sell we sell their ebooks. Um, Pimbeam Press. That's the Sharon Lee and Steve Miller. Um, Splinter Universe are, are things that are not quite canon for the Leaden Universe. About more which later. Um, these three out from Chris Kennedy Publishing. These three um, are short novels set in uh, Chuck Gannon's. Kane Riordan universe, Kane Riordan universe. That's hard to say. Um, and we publish the mainstream, the main line of, of that universe. And these are uh, excellent uh, short novels set in that same universe. So with that, we will pop over to the books and the beautiful artwork. Um, the way that I do these slideshows is that we will show you the beautiful artwork and then we will show you the covers in a subtle attempt to influence you when you see the covers next so that you will reach out and uh, pick that book up in the bookstore um, or press press buy online. Um, also, um, in the these days, um, art shows are, are hard to do. Um, so much art is... Uh, is, is digital. Um, having the virtual conventions is, is, is I think, letting us uh, see more of that digital art, but we want to share that. In this case, uh, the art is not digital. What we have here is Bob Eggleton painting in oils, um, and he paints beautiful, beautiful things. So I'd like to share the beautiful art with you. If you have questions about the art, if you're a budding artist, if you want to do cover illustrations, um, now is your time to ask these questions. Um, so, uh, Mark of Cain uh, is a Cain Reorden, uh, Reorden novel. Um, this series has been, let's see, with, the, with Chuck's, Chuck's first solo novel was in this series. It got him, uh, won him a Compton Crick Award from uh, the Baltimore Science Fiction Convention, Balticon. Several of these novels have been nebulated, nebulated nominated for Nebula Awards. Um, this is science fiction on a grand scale. It's got the swoosh, it's got the adventure, it's got the great characters, it's got really, really, really cool aliens. Um, and in this one, he's, he's uh, starting to dig behind the scenes of some of one of the most interesting to me aliens uh, in this universe. So Mark of Cain. Um, that is not all that Chuck does. Uh, in this case, Chuck was asked to contribute a short story to uh, one of our um, uh, one of our shared world anthologies. This is the Black Tide Rising series. Um, it didn't start out to be a shared world. It started out to be um, a trilogy. So it's a Bane trilogy. It was four books. Um, John Ringo is notorious for not completing series. Well, he completed this series. It was a lovely, beautiful, complete story arc in four books. Um, and we hated to see it go because there were so many cool things that could be done in this universe. Um, so we've put together several um, anthologies. We'll be on number three. You'll get to see that uh, that cover coming up soon. Um, Chuck doesn't write short. Chuck is not a uh, is not generally a short story writer. So the short story that he contributed to um, to the Black Tide Rising anthology has turned into actually two novels. Uh, this is the first one. Um, and this is the second, at the end of the journey. <coughs> um, what we have here are a group of teenagers who are um, uh, doing one of those really cool senior year trips where you get to go on a boat and do science, you know, do science, but you're but you're on a but you're on a sailing ship, and uh, really great opportunity for these kids. Turns out to be a great place to be when the zombie apocalypse comes. Um, John John Ringo has a uh, has a shtick where he says, "I hate my job." Um, 
And one of the reasons why he says, I hate my job is because being a hard, being a science fiction writer, it is very, very hard to stay ahead of the technology and stay ahead of the science. Um, <clears throat> It's, uh, I try not to blame things like COVID on John, but, you know, just after, you know, right after he's done a best-selling series on a uh, plague, um, it's hard not to. So I feel like we can blame John Ringo for COVID. Um, and this is the cover for We Shall Rise, which is the latest of the shared world anthologies. Uh, Kevin J. Anderson, um, a semi-local to Utah is uh, uh, is our uh, headliner here, but we've got wonderful stories by uh, Mike Williamson and Jody Lanai. Mike Massa is a uh, former SEAL officer. Brenda Du Bois, who is a New York Times bestseller in his own right in mysteries. He's written um, several novels with James Patterson. Um, and he's got some really great um, private eye stories, uh, private eye novels um, in the mystery field. So that'll be coming out this summer. Um, if anybody asks, yes, this is in fact a scene from the novel, or from the from one of the stories here. I think it's uh, Jason Cordova's story. Let's see. Um, one of the cool things that's coming out of this series is that uh, it's been optioned to be a uh, graphic novel. Um, the guys who are producing the graphic novel decided to crowdfund it on Indiegogo. Um, we, uh, it funded, it made one of its stretch goals, and it is now in the middle of being produced. Um, we've got a great writer, Chuck Dixon, um, uh, who invented, I believe, Bane over at DC, no pun intended. Um, and Dave Dorman is doing the cover art. Um, they've got really quality people doing, uh, doing this. So. Um, if you uh, if you're one of the initial backers, um, you uh, you should be you will be getting something this year. And uh, if you're not one of the initial backers, I think you can still contribute and uh, and get uh, get in on that. Um, that is not all that Chuck does. Um, he does the Kane Rewarden series. He does he works in other people's universes, and he uh, he has been collaborating. Um, a good bit with Eric Flint in the 1632 universe, the Ring of Fire universe. These are um, completely different from the from the other books that we we're talking about. These are um, alternate history novels. Um, it's very difficult to, to illustrate um, alternate history to, to make it look like your book is set um back in times of old but still have that um that's something that says this is not the way that it actually was back then um, tom kidd has been doing the covers for the 1632 universe for uh for a long time now and one of the reasons is because he gets that painterly feel that you get from artists from 16 from the 1630s um 1650s he is right up there with rembrandt and Bruegel and and uh, the uh, the the great painters um, um, of the Dutch and uh, uh, Flemish school, um, but you know he also knows his Grateful Dead. So um, and he's got uh, uh, he manages to get those little those little just cool indications that this isn't this is not the history that you were taught in school. Um, Let's see. Uh, this one, uh, the instead of collaborating with Eric Flint, he's collaborating with another um, 1632 Ring of Fire author, Robert Waters, and they are taking the gang from Grantville, and um, they are they are fighting the war for um, for the New World. They are taking they are trying to rewrite history, and uh, in some ways they are succeeding, and in other ways they are not. So this is another thing completely different that the that Chuck Gannon is doing. This is a book um, of a genre that we call big fat fantasy. You guys know what big fat fantasies are. Um, they are George Martin. They are J.R.R. Tolkien. They are big, epic, huge quests, um, large in scope, large in page count. And uh, Chuck Gannon was probably born to do these. So uh, David Weber is a big fan of Chuck Gannon. Um, this is going to be 
Chuck's first um, first step into the fantasy world, and and we hope you will like it. Um, I am particularly fond of this dragon. I hope you will like it too. Um, let me let me know in your comments what you guys think about this. So this one will be coming out in November. Um, so that was our um, Chuck Gannon um, segment. And then we'll be wrapping it up. No, I'm kidding. Um, we do publish other authors. And uh, we were talking about Lee and Miller earlier on. Um, Lee and Miller have been taking a uh, little hiatus. Um, and so in the meantime, while we're waiting for the latest Lee Aiden book to come through, we've been reprinting and repackaging some of the earlier Lee Aiden books. So if you guys like Honor Harrington, if you like Lois Bujold, if you like Anne McCaffrey, um, and you have been looking for something new and you haven't yet found the Leaden universe, ah, ah, I am so jealous of you because this is a huge, long, wonderful series to fall into. Um, you know, uh, science fiction readers invented binge reading. We invented binge watching. This is, this is a, a great series to do that with. I should mention flowcharts. We, we, do, we do tend to publish long series. Science fiction and fantasy lends itself to long series. Um, so for many of our series, including the Lee Aiden series, we have a handy dandy flow chart that says, this is a good place to start. You might not want to start here. Um, and, and seriously, you're just a wild, crazy person if you're starting here. Um, it's color coded um, and uh, just, you can find them on the Bain website or you can just write to us at Bain.com. We'll be happy to let you know where a good place to start is, but this is a good place to start. Um, I now have a small segment where the, we have dogs on our covers. <coughs> um, this is uh, Dave Drake doing really weird stuff, um, but weird in a fun, fun way. It'll be coming out this summer. It's the third book in his Arthurian far, 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 so far that science is magic future. Um, really great, uh, great viewpoint character. We have, um, basically he's a maker um, in modern terminology. Uh, um, the, the, the terminology as used in this, in the future is a little, in this way, way, way far, far, far future, um, is a little different, but, um, it's, it's Dave Drake doing Arthurian things, but with this, with this cool science fiction touch. And of course we have magic dogs. So, you know, where they, what more do you need? Um, ah, here we go. Also fancy. This doesn't have a dog on the cover. Um, at least I hope that's not a dog. Um, it does have absolutely beautiful swords in it, though. Uh, I will say that these swords are modeled off of swords that I actually own, but my swords are not that ornate and not that cool. Uh, Destroyer of Worlds. Big fat fantasy again. Um, this one came out in September of 2020. I hope you didn't miss it. Um, if you if you have, don't tell Larry. He will be devastated to hear this. Um, you can make up your uh, your loss by going out and getting it right now. Um, Destroy of Worlds, third third book in the saga of the Forgotten Warrior. I have to say that this too started out as a trilogy. It's a Bane trilogy. It'll probably be five books. Not my fault. Um, for historical reasons, we uh, we have been commissioning not just one but two beautiful pieces of art for uh, for this series, and this is what the back cover looks like. Uh, one of the reasons why we have this art is because Kurt Miller, the artist, loves the series and he loves illustrating it. Um, look at all the different weapons we have here. Oh boy, there's maces, and war hammers, and spears, and Kurt is taking the time to actually make all of these things look. Um, look like they actually should look, which is to say functional and they could kill you. Um, as an art director, that's important to me. Ah, let's see. The next project that we have from Larry Korea is Gunrunner. Now, this is something that I know he's been talking about at LTUEs. Um, this book started out as uh, as a panel discussion. Um where Larry and John and a couple of other people, I think, were on a panel, not at LTUE, but another convention, um, and people were just throwing out ideas, and um, uh, and uh, one of the one of the ideas, one of the core ideas, started coming from uh, Larry's young son, and all of these things. What would be cool? What would be really, really cool? Well, you know, huge, horrible monsters, and uh, space pirates, and uh, and space, um, 
uh, spaceships and uh, evil um, evil planets. All of this got put into this novel because they realized this is going to be a really good novel, and they were absolutely right. Um, here we don't have the I don't have the, the the final art for you, but I but I wanted to show you sort of uh, one of the preliminary steps before we get final art. Um, this was about I think the third probably around the third round of sketches, but we narrowed it down to this particular sketch. And I just wanted to I wanted to show the reader the scale how big that flipping monster is. Um, so you get the little little bitty tiny man. Um, makes for great great art much trickier on a cover. So this is how we ended up doing it on the cover. So it's a very different treatment from just using the uh, using the art, but that's okay. It's that kind of a book. Um, and we also get the, we, we get the, we get the, the, the sense of scale, but we also get um, the, uh, the sense of action, I think, better in this, in the way that we did this cover. This is just out, just came out in January. Um, I don't know if Larry knows this or not yet, because we just found out yesterday, but this is a national bestseller. So thank you guys for buying this, and uh, keep on doing that. So what is Larry working on next? Larry's first book was called Monster Hunter International. This one Monster Hunter Bloodlines. Um, I, uh, usually, um, we will have a finished book that we hand off to the series artist, Alan Pollock, and he will pick out the coolest monster in the book, and that's what he will put on the cover, and that works for us really, really well. Um, but in this case, um, we, we didn't quite have a finished novel yet, and... Uh, uh, so Alan asked if he could create a monster, um, and uh, and Larry, being the kind of guy that he is, enjoying a challenge, said, "Sure, go for it." And this is what Alan came up with. So um, Larry had a great time figuring out how she's going to fit into the book, um, and uh, I think uh, it's going to be a great, uh, great read in August for everybody. Um, Monster Hunter Bloodlines. Yeah, she just looks evil. I love that. All right. What do we have next? Oh, while we are waiting for Monster Hunter Bloodlines to come out, I have a new urban fantasy for you guys. This is a debut novel. Um, I want to just concentrate on the art a little bit. Um, this is a self-portrait by the artist, Todd Lockwood. Um, and... Everything that is pictured in this uh, magic user's uh, room here is something that is in Todd Lockwood's possession. So uh, the giant squid, the dragon, the Buddhas, the monkeys, um, the crappy little laptop, all of this stuff um, are things that, that were drawn from the artist's studio. So um, really just, just, a, just a fun, fun painting um, that Lockwood has done for us. Lockwood teaches painting as well as, as does cover illustration himself. Um, so Blood and Whispers is the name of this one. It is out um, next month, so you should, you should be able to pre-order it. The, the uh, e-arc is up at Bain.com. Um, yeah, that rabbit thing he's got in his office. Um, if you like the Monster Hunter series, you are going to like this. Uh, it's not quite as uh, gonzo, um, shall we say, as a Monster Hunter series, but you are going to enjoy these characters. You're going to like um, like spending time with these guys. Um, so, uh, Blood and Whispers, Soldier of the Arcanum. Aaron Haskins is the author for this. And All right. Here we go. Here's our other uh, dog dog on the cover. And this is for science fiction novel by an author with, uh, well, I think he used to live in Utah. Um, so that is Mike Cooper. Mike has collaborated with Larry. Um, this is a solo novel of his. It's a story of alien invasion. Um, we lose. The humans lose. Um, and uh, we... Uh, we eventually turn it around, uh, but there were a whole bunch of collaborators. And once the uh, we do turn it around, what this guy does, he's a bounty hunter, is hunt down aliens and hunt down collaborators. Um, and he's got a faithful dog to help him out with that. So that's the that's the family business. Um, 
great, great, great fun novel. So, and that will be out also this summer. Serpent Daughter. Art artist is Dan Dos Santos. Um, just an absolutely fantastic artist. Um, I, I, I truly think that, that, that we at Bain have some of the absolute best illustrative artists in any genre of all time working for us right now. They're doing just incredible, beautiful work. Um, just so pleased to be able to put these on our, co on our covers and share these with you. Um, then this is, I believe, the fourth book in the series, maybe the yeah, I think it's the fourth. Um, and, and Dan has been doing portraits um, of the main character for all of these books. And you get to see the character's growth um, just in, in the cover art. Um, DJ Butler, um, also a local Utah author, so you should be following the series already anyway. Uh, but Witchy Eye is just absolutely fantastic. It's alternate fantasy, so it's a story of um, an America that never knew a United States. <clears throat> um, it's also an America where there are lots and lots and lots of different magic systems, and uh, Butler absolutely just delves into the research, um, uh, makes makes these different magic systems and different cultures just come alive, um, and he, uh, he, he writes music for them. Um, there's a companion CD for this where Dave is singing songs from all of the different cultures that he has um, in the books. But mostly these are just grand, big adventures um, with, with a lovely, compelling um, uh, central character. So let's see what is up next. In the Palace of Shadow and Joy. This is something completely different, also by the same author, DJ Dave Butler. Um, if you guys like Jack Vance, if you guys like Fefford and the Grey Mouser from Fritz Leiber, then if you guys like buddy adventures, you're going to like In the Palace of Shadow and Joy. These are very silly. Um, Don Bates has just done, you know, just done a beautiful job of, of capturing the, these, these characters, and they are characters. Oh my god, are they characters. Uh, but they're also, at the end of the novel, they become good friends. Um, they don't start out that way necessarily. Um, and everybody, but everybody is out to get them. And it's hard to see, you know, that they, you know, they really do deserve it. Um, in the Palace of Shadow and Joy, great, fun, planet adventure, Wond wonderful, wonderful feeling, um, cool, funky things. Cat, please do not get me off of the internet. Thank you. Um, let's see. Ah, same author, completely different. As you will see, we like to we like to let our authors do what they do. So we try not to box them in too much. Um, in this case, we have the Cunning Man. Um, it's this is Dave Butler writing with a friend of his, Aaron Michael Ritchie, another um, great author in his own right. <laughs> and these are. Um, these are set in Utah. They are set in the 1930s. They're, they're, they are a different kind of alternate fantasy. Um, they are detective stories in a way. Um, they are buddy stories where we have a cunning man who is a beet farmer and, uh, and a member of the Church of Latter-day Saints. And he, uh, with his son, who is, um, I believe, portrayed in this one, the, the sequel to uh, The Cunning Man, um is the jupiter knife <clears throat> he uh they they solve supernatural mysteries um so uh larry korea has has got the uh, uh the elevator pitch for this one it's like jim butcher crossed with grapes of wrath there you go what more do you need uh <laughs> well we have absolutely beautiful covers by dan dos santos again so ah there's another genre that we do at Bain, and that is military science fiction. Nobody does covers for military science fiction quite so well as Kurt Miller. He just he gets into the hardware, he understands the swoosh, um, and uh, this is a book that came out in uh, December of 2020. You know, I feel like 2020 was such a 
it was easy to miss the fun things in 2020. So I, I am going back and showing some some of the books that we published in 2020, not just showing you the books that are coming up because because I don't want you to miss out on the the great stuff that came out then. Um, Mike Williamson opened up his Freehold Universe to other writers. Larry Korea has got a story in here. Brad Torgerson, another Utah author, has got a story in here. Mike Massa. Uh, I mentioned him before. Casey Azell is currently serving. She's a major in our Air Force. She flies helicopters for us. Rob Hampson is a neuroscientist. Um, this is basically a handbook on how you run a, uh, a resistance movement. Um, and it's that's exactly what it was intended to be. It's science fiction um, and uh, a bunch of, bunch of really great stories. Um, there is another book, much the same spirit, uh, Freehold Defiance, um, set in the, the same time period in the Freehold universe. Um, Resist, challenge, provoke, prevail. That is the uh, the theme of this one. Um, Kevin Anderson, Kevin Eikenberry, because you can't have too many Kevins in, in a uh, anthology. We're not going to go there. We went there with the David anthology. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Jason Cordova, Justin Watson, Justin uh, recently uh, a uh, captain in uh, the army, I believe. Um, so we have people who have been there, done that, writing, uh, writing stories about being there and doing that. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes our military science fiction a little bit different from a lot of other people's military science fiction. Um, <sighs> I can talk more about military science fiction and why it is that we do what we do. Um, but part of it is because we understand um, that freedom isn't free, <clears throat> that there is a cost to all these actions, that it's not just big guns and shooting things. Although, I mean, you know, we all, you know, everybody loves big guns and shooting things, but there's a cost to this. Um, and we talk about that. Uh, let's see, Mike Williamson a few years back did a great book called A Long Time Until Now, in which he displaced in time um, a, uh, uh, a unit um, of our armed forces, a convoy with not particularly specially skilled people. Um, this was not a bunch of SEALs. This wasn't a bunch of special operators. It was just a bunch of guys driving trucks. Um, and he put them back in time um, where they discover other people who are displaced in time and space. Um, and he had a great, great, great fun time with this. I think this is one of Williamson's best books. Um, that came out in May 2015. And we finally have the sequel, um, which uh, for a long time was called A Long Time Until Sequel, which was we, we decided that probably was not going to be the final title. Uh, absolutely, again, beautiful, evocative uh, military science fiction. Um, cool stuff from Kurt Miller. Um, that was now, this is then, is the, uh, is the title for this one. Um, at the end of a long time until now, I'm not going to tell you because it's a really cool twist. But at any rate, you would have thought that, that the, the twist at the end of that one, uh, nothing more could be done. But there is, and it's a really, really cool story. So very excited to see this one. And it will be coming out in December of 21. So that's suitable for all holiday gifting. Um, something completely different. This is a... Uh, it's not really an urban fantasy because it takes place at a lake resort in, um, in the Midwest, I think it is. Uh, the Waters in the Wild. This is uh, Misty Lackey's Elves in the Real World Universe, one of my favorite universes that she writes in. She's writing with Rosemary Edgehill for this one. This came out this fall in September. Um, great Larry Dixon cover. Um, if you like urban fantasy, this is some fun, fun stuff. Domesticating dragons. This is a fun one. This is this is this is where we have a uh, we have a young corporate droid. Um, uh, he's 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 trying to he's trying to get his dream job, and uh, he, where he's working for this giant corporation, and the giant corporation is creating um, genetically engineered dragons, um, like you know like we can have them. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, this, this one starts out, we need the dragons because a, uh, because a plague has killed off all the dogs. Don't listen. My dogs should not listen to that. Um, so we need the dragons to do all the things the dogs have done for us, um, you know, except for maybe 
you know, cuddle. Um, but uh, but dragons, cool dragons, cool cool uh, gene engineering. Dan Colbolt, the author, um, works in this field, so he knows what he's talking about. He's written some nonfiction for the Bain website. This is his first fiction for us. And that one just came out. I love this cover. It's uh, David Mattingly was one of the first artists to work with Jim um, when Bain first got started in 1984, um, when we first published our books. I think uh, Paul Anderson cover was the first thing David Mattingly did for us. Um, of course, he's the longtime artist for uh, the Honor Harrington series. Uh, he's done mats for Disney, and he does beautiful, beautiful science fiction art um, to this day. He too teaches uh, teaches art in, uh, in in New York City. Um, this one came out this summer. Um, Catherine Asaro. Do we get Jim back? Do we get Jim to be able to talk on this? It... <laughs> All right, that's a little scary. But... <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so at any rate, this is this is this is a series uh, that uh, that Jim has edited, and, and Jim has worked with with uh, with, with Catherine um, on books in this series. Um, these are these these are mysteries, um, um, not just alien mysteries, but po but police procedurals. Uh, Major Bajan has retired from the military. She set herself up as a private investigator um, on the Capital Planet for the Scolian Empire, um, and because she comes from the underworld, because she's got a a low Lower class, literally in this case, um, lower uh, on the planet. Um, uh, she can walk in both worlds, and that lets her do a lot of things as a private eye that uh, that other people can't do. But big, you know, just beautiful science fiction. Um, this is the third featuring Major Bajan. You don't have to have read the others; you can just dive right into this one. Um, the Eleventh Gate. Uh, again, just absolutely. Fun, fun science fiction. Um, you know, science fiction is supposed to be fun. Uh, Lee and Miller have got that in their bio. Science fiction is supposed to be fun. Yes, it is. Uh, Nancy Kress is not a prolific author. She writes maybe one book every three or four years. Um, we're lucky enough to be able to publish this latest one. This is uh, um, a far future where we have space travel. Um, one of the reasons why we have space travel is because we have these 10 gates that we ran across. And the 10 gates let, let us go from, from uh, planet to planet to planet, all of which are conveniently useful for humans. Um, and we have a very stable society where um, some of the planets are run by uh, this one family and some of the planets are run by this other family and everything is lovely and stable until they find the 11th gate and then Nancy screws everything up. She gets to talk about different forms of government. She gets to talk about um, uh, gender dynamics. She gets to talk about space travel. She gets to talk about alien artifacts. This is the kind of thing that science fiction is supposed to be. So if you missed it in May, please do pick it up. Um, this one is also uh, uh, just absolutely pure quill hard science fiction. I will say too that the scene is an actual scene in the book that they're, um, and I think actually in the book the girls are naked. I did make the uh, uh, did make the artist put clothes on them. Uh, Rich man's sky. Um, when this was written about uh, 18 months, 24 months ago, um, I thought of this as a uh, uh, a fun um, look at a future that probably was not going to be. Um, and in this case, we have um, oligarchs controlling our access to space. There are four guys who control all of the uh, uh, all of the resources that are necessary to get out to space. And um, it looks like the future is going to be completely controlled by them. And I thought, well, you know, it's probably not going to happen that way. And now I'm thinking, damn, well, really, seriously? Um, but at any rate, this is a great, great piece of hard science fiction, um, perhaps more predictive than we would have hoped. And um, uh, the, the impetus behind the, the uh, behind this scene is that it turns out that the nation states uh, of Earth are not necessarily pleased to be um, subject to the whims of four billionaires. Um, so they send up spies. And uh, these are the spies, some of the spies that they send up. So. Uh, Rich Man's Sky coming out in April. I believe the uh, ARC 
is available at Bain.com right now. Um, if anybody's not not familiar with the term ARC or EARC, um, <coughs> this ARC stands for Advanced Reader Copy. Um, e is, of course, electronic. Um, and these are, back in the day, um, we uh, publishers would put together early versions of their books, send it out to um, influential bookstores and book reviewers. And uh, uh, the people at Bain, uh, Bain's Bar said, hey, we're influential too. Why don't you, you know, why don't you give us copies of these books? And Jim said, well, this is very expensive for us to, you know, to produce these things. Um, they're basically just books and, you know, we have to, you know, print them on paper. And, 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 and so, I, you know, much as I love you guys, I can't afford to do that for all of you. And they said to Jim, we'll pay for them. And Jim said, huh, I will sell them to you. And the, uh, the eARC was born. Um, so the eARCs are early versions of the books. They're not necessarily edited. They're not necessarily the final versions. But if you absolutely have to get the latest Larry uh, Korea or the latest Larry Niven or the latest um, Tim Powers or the latest uh, what have you, um, we will be happy to sell it to you. Um, and that's what the eARCs are. Um, Going Interstellar is not a new book. It's actually an old book, um, but it did so very nicely that we're putting it into a trade paperback with a, with a new package. We kept the beautiful artwork from Sam Kennedy. Um, I, just that we're, we're, this is my this is my hard science fiction section um, um, of the uh, of the presentation. Um, we do hard science fiction. Going Interstellar is super duper hard science fiction. It's fact and fiction. So we have great um, science fiction stories by Michael Bishop, by Ben Bova, by Mike Resnick before he died, Sarah Hoyt, um, and we also have. Uh, fact articles on different me methods of interstellar propulsion. So each of the stories takes a different me method of interstellar propulsion. And uh, so we've got the fact, we've got the fiction that builds on it, and you get that kind of interaction between the science and scientists and uh, science fiction writers and the readers uh, and the artists that I think makes our genre absolutely unique. Um, so going interstellar will be a trade paperback. In that same vein, um, not edited by uh, Les Johnson, but uh, but edited by Rob Hampson, who's a, a working neuroscientist, and his sister, Sandra Medlock, who is an English teacher, uh, with an introduction by our uh, Larry Correa. Um, these are stories, um, no, no, no science fact in this, but basically taking off from the idea that we are going to get interstellar travel. It is going to be through generation ships, and this is how it's going to happen. Um, uh, so we start off with a generation ship arriving at a planet, and we have uh, the founders of that planet, um, and these are their stories. Um, some of them are tall tales. Uh, D.J. Butler's story is, is a kind of a tall tale. Uh, David Weber writing with uh, Mark Wandry to bookend um, the, uh, the story of the programmers who are needed to, uh, to make the generation ship actually work. Um, and... Uh, uh, if you guys are familiar with um, Isaac Asimov's work, um, you'll know that a great way to do info dumps is in the Encyclopedia Galactica, right? Where the the author can tell you all there is to know about a particular planet or a particular subject in just a nice little uh, encyclopedia type article and then get on to telling the story. Well, we have two different viewpoints of uh, of Encyclopedia Galactica. We have uh, we have one version um, that's sort of a freehold libertarian version, and then we have the people's story of uh, of this planet um, published by Flint Press. Um, so a little homage to uh, to Eric Flint, um, and uh, they very very nicely done by uh, by the editor Rob Hampson, um, who's he's a great author in uh, in his own right, and we're looking forward to publishing his first novel later um, later I think in 2022. So um, Les Johnson has himself been busy. Uh, it's a cover by Don Mates, The Space Time War. Um, the thing about physics is, and Les Johnson is a physicist, he's a working physicist. Um, he just got uh, uh, his latest solar sail uh, project uh, funded to the tune of, I think, 46 million by, by NASA. He's had other solar sail, sail projects go up and be successful. 
Um, he's, he's not only talking about this stuff, he's actually doing this stuff. The thing about physics is the more you get into physics, the weirder it gets. Um, and so this is some of the stuff that Les can't do when, uh, when, when he's writing grant proposals for NASA. Um, but, uh, but he's thinking very big, very, uh, very broad. And yet still informed by real science and real physics and uh, really how people do things. So uh, the space-time war is, uh, is, uh, is I think, a second or third um, uh, solo novel, hopefully the start of uh, something big from, from Les, and that'll be out this fall. Um, a little closer to home, which is to say, I think we just, we just published it, um, Frontier by a newer writer, a guy named Pat Childs. He's worked in the aerospace industry. Uh, he's not a scientist, he's an engineer. Um, and again, an industry insider. He knows how things really are done. So this one is um, uh, near future, near space. We are talking about the, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 years in the future, and we have the uh, the the space force is a real thing, and um, we're one of the things that they deal with, uh, which is a real problem, um, is the uh, is space pollution, right? All the all the gazillion different little bloody satellites that we have um, uh, have orbiting. What happens when they go bad? And that's one of the things um, that our space force does in dealing with planetary defense. Well. Pat Childs decides to take this on. What happens if bad actors are involved with this as well? Um, and interesting things ensue. So we have the first privately funded um, manned trip to an asteroid. Things go terribly, terribly wrong. Um, and uh, uh, they're sabotaged and our space force has to come to the rescue. But they can only come to the rescue if they can make the science and engineering work. So great, fun Ab, you know, absolutely informed with, with modern sensibility, but still with that same great feeling that you had of classic uh, science fiction um, back when the world was young. Um, more hard science fiction, but also military science fiction. This one too, like Gunrunner, started out as a, um, uh, as a discussion on a panel at a convention. Um, this one was Liberty Con in Chattanooga a few years back. Um, Travis Taylor uh, took the idea of uh, what would what what would war on the moon really be like, and he ran with it. Um, he and Tim Zahn um, uh, put together this great team, um, and what we have here is a braided novel. Uh, um, I think this is one of the best books that we published in 2020. So, so, so much fun. It does not have a dog on the cover, but there is a dog on the moon. So just. You know, just so that you know, this is, you know, for you dog lovers, this, this is a must have for you. Um, absolutely a great book. Um, yeah. Uh, Travis. Travis is doing a lot of stuff. He's keeping busy. Um, he's uh, he's one of our rock star TV show uh, uh, TV show stars. Um, he's got a, a show that had uh, a great uh, debut season, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Um, he uh, uh, he had the absolute best. Uh, well, I won't say best, but um, one of the most convincing reasons for why my novel is late when he called us up and said, well, I'm out of the hospital now, but I had radiation poisoning. Oh, goody. Yay. Ah, I'm glad he led with him out of the hospital now. It wasn't terribly severe, but he did get it while filming The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. So this is a plug. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, um, then watch the TV show on the History Channel. So um, this is what his next science fiction project is. Um, pause for water. <clears throat> and that is Saving Proxima. Travis Taylor and Les Johnson, they both live in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, they are both <clears throat> uh, working in the space industry there. Travis is an engineer. We call him Doc Travis because he's got, I think, I don't know, four or five different degrees at, at this point. Um, hard science fiction, near future, near space, great um, driving plot, um, really, uh, yeah. yeah, this is real science fiction. That, that's what Jim Bain called hard science fiction, real science fiction. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful evocative cover from Dave Seeley. 
Let's see. All right, Space Time War. We liked it so much. I put it in twice. I'm going to skip over that one. And we will go to something completely different, although it has also really cool um, spaceships. And that is the Valkyrie Protocol. Um, David Weber, you know from the Honor Harrington series. If you don't know him from the Honor Harrington series, again, oh my God, lucky you. You have a huge, new, fantastic series that you can dive into. Um, but the, there are rules to the Honorverse. You know David Weber's writing. You know that he is very, very focused on keep on playing fair with the readers. On playing that the readers understand the rules of the universe. So much so that one of our uh, FAQs on Bade.com is an explanation for why why there's an incontinuity in um, in one of uh, David's uh, uh, ship capabilities. He takes it really, really seriously. <laughs> All the stuff that he doesn't allow himself to do in the Outerverse is in this series, uh, the Gordian Protocol series. He's writing with an uh, up-and-coming writer, a guy named Jacob Holo. Um, and uh, it's got time travel. It's got uh, paradoxes. It's got space, wonky spaceships. Um, the Valkyrie Protocol, I'm particularly uh, excited about because it has Samuel Pepys as an action hero, which, you know, from Pepys' diary, uh, of uh, again, plague years, and you know, I, I don't know why our authors are writing um, two years ahead of time of, of COVID about plagues. I, I really, I don't think I want to investigate that one too much. Um, we'll let the History Channel worry about that, you know, a few years from now. But at any rate, um, Valkyrie Protocol, big swooshy, swooshy, swooshy stuff, save the universe kind of things, really neat, really fun. Um, I do have to mention Stoner because. Honor is just awesome. We love Honor Harrington. Um, this book was a Dragon Award winner. It was a New York Times bestseller. Um, and it wound up Honor Harrington's um, story arc, her character arc. Took a lot of books to do that. <coughs> um, but it did not wind up the Honorverse. It did not wind up the secret of the slavers. And so taking that story and moving it forward is what's happening in the next book in the Honorverse. Um, I just want to, I wanted to share with you, this is going to be a wraparound cover. The original working title for this book um, was The Face of Evil. And when we gave this assignment to David Mattingly, that was what it was called, The Face of Evil. And he did this fantastic Face of Evil for the back cover. But none of us thought that that was going to be a really good selling title. So they ended, they, in, in the end, it's the, the title is To End in Fire, which is actually a great title. But we have this fantastic face of evil on the back cover. And I'm just keeping it because, you know, it's a really great face of evil. And now you guys know why it's there. Um, that'll be coming out in October, To End in Fire. So this is um, taking the characters, uh, the spies that uh, David and Eric um, worked on. Um, basically taking the main line of the honor uh, of the honor story and moving it forward um, with these characters from the crown of slaves saga all right um, if you don't want to wait for that we have coming out this summer David Weber writing with Richard Fox uh, Richard Fox is an indie writer um, he's got some uh, cool military science fiction out uh, not from us <clears throat> um, but uh, this one is David Weber writing in one of my favorite universes of his that he hasn't gotten back to in a long time, and that is the Path of the Fury universe. Um, the latest incarnation of that is an uh, omnibus called, uh, well, expanded version basically called In Fury Born. Um, and this is an earlier, much, much earlier in the history um, from Path of the Fury and In Fury Born. Um, Again, Weber writing action, writing military science fiction the way that only Weber can do. And in this case, it's got that you know, little bit of a cool Richard Fox twist to it. So um, great characters, uh, great military science fiction, great, uh, great, great adventure. And so that'll be out this summer. So 
Um, Eric Flint also has his own little series that he does uh, him, uh, as well, the Ring of Fire series. Um, we touched on that uh, earlier when uh, we talked about Chuck Gannon writing in this series. In this case, we are not going to the new world. We are going to the old world. We're going east. Um, and there is a small delegation of uh, modern day Americans who are sent uh, east to make contact um, um, with the, uh, the with, with the with the Chinese Empire now the, the a Asia at that point is 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 in a, a very um, interesting time um, and uh, our guys are just smack dab in the middle of that um, great great evocation of um, uh, of Asian history in this book uh, and we also have coming this. Uh, coming this spring, um, Eric Flint writing with Griff Barber, the secret, um, uh, the sequel to um, uh, their uh, their first book set in the, the Mughal Empire. Um, we are going to uh, we are going back to India um, and that region. And again, our our stalwart guys from Grant Bull uh, run into trouble. Um, so. This one is so much fun. We uh, again, we talked about Tom Kidd being just the perfect cover artist for this series because he's he's so painterly, um, and he can be so painterly um, that he would have fit in um, in this universe. Um, and uh, this is this this cover just tells a story. We have here. Um, the main character is Dr. Gribbleflots. Dr. Gribbleflots has discovered um, that he is not in any of the encyclopedias that school children um, have access to in Grantville, that he is completely lost to history. And he is, since he is somewhat of a character, he is completely pissed off about this and determined, determined to, to change that. Um, so uh, um, he gets himself into trouble because he is an obnoxious guy. He's just, he's just obnoxious. So um, Rick Boatwright, Karen Offord, are uh, writing together on a character that uh, Rick Bo Boatwright created. More of the 1632 universe. In this case, we have a, a more symbolic cover where we have Mike Stearns, um, who has, um, in some ways, become an emperor from being a, a labor boss. Um, and uh, I th think the reason why this is a more symbolic cover is because Tom Kidd really, really needed to do a dragon, um, but I'm good with that. So um, all different kinds of evils and sins uh, that are besetting Mike Stearns as he deals with the coast of chaos. What we have here is a short novel by Eric Flint, uh, Paula Goodlett, and Gorg Huff, um, who have written uh, many stories um, and worked with Eric before on novels in the universe um, and uh, some, some other stories to flesh out the, flesh out the volume that are related to the coast of chaos. So, something completely different. Um, really, gamers out there, I know Jim, Jim Minns is raising his hand. Um, anybody remember the Traveler, the Traveler game? Well, the Traveler universe, uh, Mark Miller was instrumental in creating, uh, creating the Traveler uh, role-playing game. Um, Mark was the second person inducted into the Gaming Hall of Fame after Gary Gygax, and deservedly so. Well, he's written a novel set in the Traveler universe, and it is so much fun. Um, you do not have to have played the game to enjoy the novel. It's just a wonderful, cool work of science fiction where we have um, uh, an agent of the Imperium who dies. That's that's how the novel starts, <clears throat> and uh, he is downloaded um, and recreated every time that there is a hideous, horrible problem that somebody has to solve uh, in the Imperium. And we see this over and over and over again: how he evolves, how he changes through his experiences, and how he affects the Imperium. Um, in one of its incarnations, it was a Dragon Award finalist. Um, we talked about the Dragon Award before. I'll mention it now. Uh, you do not have to be a member of Dragon Con to um, nominate uh, works. They, uh, uh, they recognize uh, various different categories of novels. They recognize games and TV shows and movies. Um, and you do not have to be a member of Dragon Con to vote. All you have to do is register. So I encourage um, anybody who is interested in, uh, in this kind of science fiction and fantasy um, 
to uh, to to go over to the DragonCon website and register and, and let them know what you like. Ah, the Godel operation. This one is fun. Um, the main character uh, of this book is not the handsome dude. It's not the hot chick. It's actually the little bug droid on the guy's shoulder. Um, he's the narrator. Uh, he's the one who is uh, uh, whose eyes we see this uh, this future. Um, and uh, it's uh, another work of um, uh, semi near future. I mean, it, 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 it's set in the solar system, maybe a few hundred years from now. Um, and uh, it's a solar system that we have completely populated. There's billions of life forms, humans, um, AIs, all different kinds uh, of, of beings. And uh, James Cambius uh, takes us on a tour of this. Um, there's a great mystery. Uh, if you like the Maltese Falcon, you will enjoy this. Um, it, uh, we tried to get that just big scope across in the artwork, just how much fun and how cool the future is going to be. All right, this is not a cool future. This is this is a really, really bad, terrible, horrible future. Um, aliens have invaded. <coughs> um, they have uh, uh, they have terribly oppressed um, humanity. And then, because of one drunken Russian on a very cold outer planet um, saying exactly the wrong thing, they, they have gone away. They have given us 100 years to get ourselves ready to fight them. And um, the first novel was uh, in, in the series was uh, was telling that story how we started to prepare to fight the aliens. <clears throat> um, one of the uh, one of the things that we have to do is deal with the Chinese who have uh, we had just finished a war with the Chinese and they um, um, they have devastated a lot of the world. But we but we defeated them um, and we have come back. Now the question is, will we be able to unite? To fight the aliens and that's sort of what this second book is about we have two siblings we have a, uh, a girl and her half brother um, who uh, who are the progeny of the hero from the first book um, he was a burmese conscript soldier for the chinese came over to live in america and uh, raise his children in peace and was not able to do that because war has come to us so uh, a neat Eat weird, weird um, alien invasion story, human invasion story, um, told by uh, the very talented T.C. McCarthy that is already out. <coughs> speaking of really cool stuff, speaking of military science fiction, last year we published uh, the best of Jerry Pornell. Um, Jerry uh, was one of the seminal uh, creators of military science fiction. Um, when you think military science fiction, the first three names have got to be Jerry Pornell, Dave Drake, and Jim Bain. Um, and uh, we lost Jerry a couple of years ago. Um, and at Bain, we've been very lucky to have um, the, the the last few books that, that he created. Uh, his long-time um, uh, editor, uh, John Carr, put together this volume for us, and it was a national bestseller. You guys uh, really, really went out and supported it. Um, so was this one, Starborn and Godsons. Um, that came out in April um, this year, just when all the bookstores were closing down. So again, if you missed it, it is a fantastic book. It is a great planet story. It is a wonderful story of first contact. In this case, it is first contact between uh, humans and humans. We have the settlers on humanity's first uh, interplanetary colony, and then we have a another generation ship that comes to call on them. Um, so much fun. Larry Nevin, Jerry Pornell, Stephen Barnes, all three of them contributing fantastic things to this. Um, we do have the other two novels uh, in the series. They are in print. Um, they are available um, as ebooks. I I heartily, heartily, heartily recommend them. Um, and then this one too, Mama Luke's. Mama Luke's was um, uh, the last solo novel that, uh, that Jerry worked on. <coughs> um, he worked on it for a very, very long time. Um, he didn't have the excuse of having radiation poisoning. 
um, as to why his novel was late. He did have the excuse of, I had a brain tumor. But you know what? He got over the brain tumor and he got back to writing and he was cranking away on this and he was so close to done. So close. Everything on the page, all of it beautifully beautifully edited because one of the things that Pornell could do was really, he was a really, really good editor. Um, knew exactly where he wanted to go to end the book and then he passed away. So the question was, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? This is, this, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a capstone novel, the end of her career. Um, Philip Pornell, Commander Philip Pornell, late of uh, the U.S. Navy, um, was working very closely with his dad on the final climactic scene that uh, that needed to be written because it's a naval battle. And one of the things that Commander Philip Pornell did for the U.S. Navy was war game. Um, knew exactly how this naval battle should go. Um, Philip Pornell is a science fiction writer. He's had a couple short stories published. Um, you're going to see more from him, but never quite taken on such a such a big project. Really wanted to be able to do it. Had talked to his dad. Knew, knew where he wanted to go. Turns out the Janissaries is David Weber's favorite series of Jerry Pornell's. Um, so we we asked David if he would if he would work on this book. He said yes. Um, the two of them, David and Philip, uh, finished it. And um, what we have is a great work of military science fiction. Um, so 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 much fun. Uh, if you haven't read it, if you think it's a word worthy. Please, uh, please, please do seek it out. Ah, let's see. Uh, this is another alternate history. Um, it's called The Romanov Rescue. Rescue the past in order to save the future. Um, it is... Uh, it's all the adventure stories of the turn of the last century, um, spies and daring do, and then the Scarlet Pimpernel, and all, all, all. I mean, that that goes a little bit farther back, but um, it's got zeppelins, it's got uh, it, it's got the it's, it's got the Russian nobility. You know what? It doesn't have communism. It doesn't have any communism in it. Yay! The communists. This is a, this is an alternate history where there is no communism. So happy. Um, very pleased to see this. Uh, Tom Crapman is working with uh, several of his protégés is the first novel he wrote with Mona Lisa Foster and there'll be others coming out um, in the next uh, in the next few seasons so big beautiful swishy Zeppelin from uh, Dominic Harmon here world breakers remember we were talking about you know how much fun big big explosions are this is about that <laughs> <laughs> this is about big explosions. It's about super tanks in space. It is just absolute great fun. Um, this one, this one has an interesting history as to how it came about too. It is a, it is a themed anthology edited in house by Tony Daniel and, and Christopher Rocchio, both of whom are also great science fiction writers. Um, this was this was an anthology where there were no end mores. That every single writer up there deserves to be in here. Very pleased that they got Wen Spencer to write the science fiction story for this. Um, if you're familiar with Keith Lammers' Bolos, you will be liking this. Um, the uh, <clears throat> um, the origin of this anthology came about from a social media post that I did. Um, uh, about a year ago, and uh, in it, I included one of my favorite quotes uh, from Jim Bain, where he talks about um, what it's a, a quote from uh, an editorial letter that he sent to Keith Lommer when Keith had asked him, "Hey, what do you want me to write next?" Um, and basically, Jim said, "I want you to write Bolos next." But he did it in a beautiful, evocative, wonderful way, and um, some of the some of the people on social media just uh, just ran with it and said, "Oh my God, we would love to follow that advice and write those stories." And I said, "Yes, you should totally do that." And that's how War Breakers came about. So that one will be out this summer as well. Um, did we say science fiction is supposed to be fun? Science fiction is supposed to be fun. Um, David Boop, uh, who is another Western editor, has edited, uh, he edited a series of three anthologies of weird Westerns for us. When he asked me, 
you know, should we do some more weird Westerns? I said, you know what? I love the weird Westerns, but let's take the Westerns to space. And that's exactly what he did. Um, he's got just fantastic writers. Um, Elizabeth Moon, Alan Dean Foster, Will McCarthy, um, hard science fiction writer, Joe, uh, Martin Shoemaker, um, Kat Rambo writing with J.R. Martin. Um, just just a wonderful, wonderful lineup here. Um, and uh, so there's going to be three more anthologies. Weird West Takes to Space. You, I don't think you guys can see this, but um, but you will note that uh, the star on our on our uh, far future sheriff's chest is actually a Bane logo, which seems absolutely right. So that'll be out in November. Um, here is another um, anthology of uh, short stories, theme anthology. Again, we try not to make it too tricky for you. Sword and planet, because if you can have swords and you can have planets, why shouldn't you have both? Um, Simon Green has got story, uh, T.C. McCarthy, Jody Nye, um, some uh, some new authors that you might not have seen uh, seen at Bain before that we'd like to introduce you to. Uh, Christopher Rocchio is the sole editor of this one, all new, all original stories. Um, and uh, this is a new artist for us, um, uh, Kieran Yanner, uh, but he's illustrated some of uh, Rocchio's uh, books for another publisher that shall not be mentioned. Um, his solo novels uh, are published elsewhere. Um, but uh, really, really fun um uh, cool uh cool artwork for this one um i should also mention that simon green if you like his stuff he's going to be writing for us uh we've got um, um we've got a jekyll and hyde novel um that'll be coming out uh later in 2021 or early 2022 um and uh <laughs> And, we've, and we're bringing some of his backlist back as well. So, uh, so look out for more from Simon Green from Bain. So that wraps up what I had for you guys. Uh, Mike, were there, were there any questions? Were there, were, were there any, uh, any comments that uh, people want to people, people make about the show? Yeah. Uh, so one person asked, uh, do you accept unsolicited queries we do we absolutely do and uh you do not need an agent to work with us we're very proud about that that has always been our policy we have always accepted um uh, unsolicited manuscripts we take it very seriously and uh, if you go to bain.com you will find our submission guidelines there all right and then along with that do you accept uh young adult and middle grade we do not. Uh, we uh, uh, we publish some works that uh, that, that are potentially crossover, um, things that are suitable for YAs, but we don't publish them uh, YAs or middle grade as such. Um, it's a fairly crowded market. Um, we've we've had some success with with spinning off uh, YA novels in uh, in established universes, uh, in the Honor Harrington universe. Um, but uh, but but not do, but not doing other things. So so no, it it, it is uh, all science fiction that is uh, um, that can be read um, with enjoyment by adults. Okay, I believe that's all the questions. Oh, here were one more. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> any word on Forgotten Warrior Book Four? Ah, Forgotten Warrior Book Four. Um, there will be one. Um, the next thing um, that Larry is working on after the Monster Hunter book, I believe, will be that. Um, I know that he has other things in the Grim Noir uh, universe that he wants to do. He's also got a collaboration with Steve Diamond coming up. That actually may be the next thing that he finishes. Will be uh, a after um, after the Monster Hunter universe will be the the Steve Diamond collaboration, which uh, which itself will be you know really really cool fantasy. So, um, but you know, it it'll be coming. It'll be coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question: Is it better to submit directly or put something in the slush slush pile on the bar? Uh, we do not read the slush pile on the bar. The slush pile on the bar is basically to. Uh, to get feedback from potential Bane readers. 
So uh, it's sort of a test place. So uh, it, it's more like a workshop than, than it is an official slush pile. So, um, so no, uh, if you put it in the slush pile on the bar, it is not a submission. You have to go through the submission um, um, database that we have uh, um, to actually, for, for it to be actually an official submission. But if you're not sure if it's going to be right for our audience, putting it up on the slush pile um, topic on the bar is a great way to find out. <laughs>